Hi, in this video we're going to talk about the structural elements of Tetrix and some tips and tricks on how to use them. One of the most common problems that I see when building with Tetrix are the differences with uh, rounded L brackets and square ones. And that main difference is that the hole pattern is actually closer together on the square ones than it is on the rounded ones, which allows us to do things like uh, putting L brackets on either side of a beam and connecting it to a bottom beam. And it creates a really, really strong and secure structure, but the hole spacing for the square uh, L brackets is pretty close, so it gets a little bit tight when putting in screws. Then over here you can see the rounded L bracket which actually has some more space when you put it on and so the whole pattern right here doesn't really line up where it does on the square ones and it also allows for you to slip different uh, other different Tetrix pieces underneath and you can also wrap them around the top part of the Tetrix piece which actually does line up the holes so you have a top face to a beam. One of the biggest problems that uh, teams with really, really large robots run into are the flex of Tetrix beams and the bending inwards. And so one way that we go about solving this problem is taking one of the smaller standoffs and sticking a small axle uh, spacer into the beam along with that uh, standoff and then use two screws to fasten it all together and it creates a really, really robust Tetrix beam. Again, on the concept of flexing beams, the Tetrix motor mounts are secured at one point on e either side, which allows the motor to really move around quite a bit. So if you have gearboxes and you're trying to tighten your motor with the offset shaft, you can run into problems where the motor mount is actually flexing. And so you can really just double up the motor mounts and it creates an incredibly strong motor connection to your beam. One of the problems that we run into with servos and trying to use them in high stress situations is the, either the servo mount actually flexes because it is a piece of sheet metal or the servo ends up breaking. So one that way that we get around this is by securing the servo in another point. So what we do is we shave one of our axles off and then create this small coupling here by taking one of the axle couplers and sticking it onto the servo horn and then we put two axle spacers in along with lining up the L brackets so that there's perfect spacing and then using another L bracket to create the surface on which we can mount all kinds of attachments to. And this creates an incredibly robust uh, surface for a servo to move anything it really wants. By using these tricks, you can make sure to create a robust and rigid robot.